This area used to be part of the lagoon, but over the last few months, it's been dredged and filled with sand. The Ambergeski fisher folk have been eyeing the development warily because they say as the land extends, the fish evacuate. As you can see right now, it was made, it was planned to be only the lagoon inside that was going to be filled up. And right now you can see they're stretching out more outside their property, which is going to be killing the rest of the remaining mangroves that we have here. They already damaged a nice portion of lagoon where it, it was habitat for bonefish, tarpon, all different types of marine life, even crocodiles were in there. All that is done, it's gone, so they had to move out to find uh, different places to, to live now. So it's affecting, it affected a lot, it's affecting the livelihood of uh, fishing guides, of even people on the island right here. Bradley says that initially the proposed development was for a casino, but now they're not sure what it's going to be. The fishers and residents believe there wasn't enough consultation. We're done asking for development to stop. We're just asking to be sustainable. We want sustainable development right here in the island. We need the DOE to start doing proper assessments, not just be handing out EIAs to different developers left, right and center. We need consultations. You come down here, you speak with the locals, the associations, different party leaders, and then afterwards we can come together and see what benefits the island better. A lot of it is happening that they're killing the mangroves. Then afterwards we see on the news that they're coming down here with new projects, getting grants to re-establish the mangroves, replant mangroves. So why are we going to go backwards? And the line between development and sustainability is thin, but the area rep under Paris says he's trying to balance on it. However, he says that a lot of the land being developed now including this patch of mangrove filled land behind the Embarcadero, was sold by the previous administration. It's a very pristine piece of mangrove area there. When I got into government and when I realized that I was just recently sold a couple, maybe five, six years ago, privately owned, and it's been sold twice. And it's subdivided in two big parcels, a total of 30 acres. That's what these very same people sold out when it should have never been sold. I am right now engaging with the owners to see how we can, because big owners, they, they own a huge property. I'm finding myself at this point, I'm trying to negotiate with them to see they can consider they can leave that specific island entrusted to this community. Of course, there's nothing as a free lunch. I will have to engage with them what else we can offer them. But it's important. We have to stop these things. We have to be balanced here, Julie. Development is happening. We cannot stop it. But we have to draw our lines. And that is the fine balance that I'm finding myself trying to dance. Like it's like a guy on a trapeze and having all of these ceramic dishes in my hand. That's what I'm trying to do right now, dude. But I'm doing it and I remain committed. But he may have already failed at that balance act with this particular stretch of land and the fishers affected by it. Courtney Menzies, 7 News.